Hi, welcome to the Boston Roll Channel. I'm your host, Brian Koval. Before we get started, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to see me play your favorite deck or your spicy brew on the channel, I take donation deck lists. I'll do a deck tech, play a full Magic Online League, and help tune your list. If that sounds good, check out my contact info. It's in the video description below. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll Channel. Today I'm playing Modern, and this is a list from Patreon subscriber Jared. Jared loves Phyrexian Obliterator, and so do I, and who doesn't? So I'm excited to play some Phyrexian Obliterator today. This is a list from Magic Online user Killagerm that Jared shared with me, and although it sounds like kind of an oxymoron, this is Orsov Mono Black. <laughs> so it's mostly Mono Black. There is three Path to Exile, four Lingering Souls, and two Kaya in the main deck, and then some of the most potent sideboard cards in the format, and Rest in Peace and Stony Silence out of the board. But that is otherwise Mono Black. Every land in the deck makes black, some of them just also make white. So lots of discard, which is black's primary means of interaction. Lots of removal, which is another interactive axis black has. And some sweet planeswalkers, got Liliana of the Veil, vale, Kaya, Orzov Usurper, and of course, at the top, Rexian Obliterator, ready to show up and obliterate everybody. And then just a little touch of the Gary at the top. Grey Merchant of Astro Asphodel. Big life point swings. Definitely a sweet card. If you didn't draft either of the Theros sets, especially the first Theros set the first time around when this was a common instead of an uncommon, uh, <laughs> I am a big fan of Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Sideboard has Ashiox, Fulminator Mages, just things you'd expect, and Eradicator Valkyrie, which you might not expect, but I'm excited to try to play with that card. So this deck, just uh, run your opponent out of gas, stick Obliterator, and obliterate that's the plan so let's go obliterate i'm on the draw here with a bit of a clunker i don't think i can keep a five lander with no spells until turn three so i'm gonna mulligan this yeah there we go yeah there's too many discard spells in this deck to keep a hand that can't interact and i think i'm gonna ship the isolated chapel if i knew better what my opponent was doing Probably Path or Thoughtseize would be reasonable to bottom instead, but I think that bottoming the land makes sense in this situation. Like I have to win the game somehow, so I don't want to ship the Aetherborns completely. Oh, I guess maybe I'm supposed to bottom sh Shambling Vent, because then I can curve out Thoughtseize into Aetherborn. Yeah, I bottomed the wrong land. I was thinking I play the tap land on turn one, then I have two things on turn two. So, all right, now I don't have to think about it that much because I'm still able to Aetherborn. We're playing against Elementals. Uh, so I will take this creature that has text. And now their hand is a bunch of cards without text. So they can copy my Gifted Aetherborn, I guess, with Phantasmal Image, but Path to Exile can clear that out, if I even care, which I'm not sure that I do. I'm curious what... Okay, they are... Oh, the Primal Beyond was in the hand. I did see that, so... I'm curious about this deck. Uh, I played a Elemental Tribal deck in Legacy recently on the, the channel, and it was actually kind of fun, and... I was kind of wishing the whole time that it was a Primal Beyond 5-color Elemental deck instead of the the version that I did play. So let's see what my opponent's up to over here. So far we've only seen cards that are in generic any tribal decks. So let's see if they've got the whole Lightning Skill Elemental thing going on. Risen Reef, alright. Yep, I'm jealous. And now they can Violent Phantasmal Image and copy Risen Reef for a million triggers. Oh my god, I love this. I and mean, I hate that it's happening to me, but wow, this is great. Yeah, I'm going to have to break this up like ASAP.
So let me check the deck list real quick. If I path to exile the uh, copy, then they don't get to search for a land. But if I have other ways to target, then I might be able to kill it easier later. So Fatal Push will kill the copy, whether I have Revolt or not, which is a big deal. All right, so I, I am going to path the original. It, there's also a good chance they just don't have basic lands in their deck, or at least not many. Let's see. Yeah, I think playing to the Fatal Push makes some sense. All right, they do have a basic mountain. The good news is this is probably a deck that Obliterator is really good against. Unless they have either snipe. Oh my god. Spite Bellows is very bad against uh, Obliterator. I'm just naming random elementals right now. Yeah, the, god, that Risen Reef was so good. They have another one? Okay. It, it is another elemental, but it's not Phantasmal Image, at least. So everything that doesn't come into play off of Risen Reef is an elemental that they can play and draw another card off of. Hell of a top deck. Just went from uh, no functional cards in hand to draw five cards in a turn and then draw a bunch more cards the next turn. Voice of Resurgence, Complete Nightmare. I'm going to have to fly over that with my Lingering Souls. I have to assume the Lightning Skill Elemental's in this deck too. I mean, the mana can support it. Bummer. I really want to cast this Lingering Souls. Bottoming the wrong land on my mulligan has fucked up this entire game for me. All right, yeah. I mean, I have to shoot my shot at this, though. I'm not going to pay for Unsettled Mariner. Get wrecked. No. Oh god, do they have another one? Ah! God, this rules. Can I just quit the league and play that deck instead? <laughs> no offense to this deck. Yeah, basically Phyrexian Obliterator is the only card... I guess I could Grey Merchant if I build up enough Devotion. But even that's going to be really hard now. The The Voices of Resurgence even stop my, my Death Touch creatures from plinking in. Good news is they don't really have attacks either. But if they attack with their Voices, the tokens they make are pretty large. Wow, Vesper Lark. Turn target creature with power on one of those from your graveyard to the battlefield. Wow, they get to get Phantasmal Image and another Risen Reef. At this point, it's my plan to deck them. They'll just deck themselves off their own Risen Reef. There is no other out. And this can return Vesper Lark to play. Look at the top card. It's a land. You may put it on the battlefield. If you don't put the card, put it in your... All right, not optional. So, my plan is to deck them. Fourteen down, thirty six to go. Oh, I'm just enjoying this now. Like, I, I've lost the shit out of this game. Like, it's not even close, but I love what they're doing. I'm a huge fan. I wonder if they play Incandescent Soul Stoke or some other way to get their Thunderkin Awakener. To higher toughness like if this could get back x2s bring back bringing back the oh wow that's bonkers because you get the card immediately i guess we're about to find out what they got because they get everything 
I hope they just get another Risen Reef. Spite Bellows. Okay, so they can evoke Spite Bellows and then attack and bring it back. Yeah, okay. I, I lose all my creatures here and I'm just dead to the attack. Well, that was certainly messed up. <laughs> all right, what do I do about this? I think Fulminator Mage is pretty good. Uh, they, their mana isn't great. Liliana the Last Hope can clean up Risen Reefs. Extinction Event, probably pretty important. I mean, exiling the uh, Voices of Resurgence matters. So, Rest in Peace. Turns off Voice of Resurgence, turns off Vesper Lark, turns off Thunderkin Awakener. Yeah, I think I do want that. And are there cards in my deck that care about the graveyard? There's the Lingering Souls, but I still get the front half. I don't think Collective Brutality is good just as a removal spell, but maybe I do need it. Yeah, I just won't escalate it. Um, Kaya probably doesn't matter much. I don't think I'm going to have time to Phyrexian Arena. That's not what this matchup's about. Yeah, I'm like getting more and more convinced that Collective Brutality is not very good. Like I am going to need to mess with their hand more than I need to mess with their board. Maybe Lingering Souls is bad if I'm bringing in Rest in Peace. Sacrifice a creature, each opponent sacrifices a creature or a Planeswalker. Yeah, I mean, other than being a flying 4-3, this doesn't do anything specifically important to the matchup. Alright, so my goal is to control Risen Reef. Because I think I can beat their deck otherwise. If that is the case, I actually want the Collective Brutalities back in. Um, yeah, I think the other Lingering Souls should go too. Yeah, I need to control their board, because that's the axis they're going to beat me on. Um, I'll keep this. I don't love a one lander, but this starts to do stuff at two lands. I guess it has to be a white land specifically too. Yeah, this hand's not great. It needs lands, but I do have several answers to their first many plays. I give Inquisition can strip an Aether Vial, and then I can pick apart their hand or their plays as they make them, but I am going to need to draw lands. What do we got here? Phantasmal Image, Thunderkin Awakener, Risen Reef. So... Wow, I wish I had the white mana for rest in peace. With power, one or less. Ugh. So I think taking Awakener, or, or no, I can take Risen Reef. And then hold up Fatal Push. This costs two to evoke. Ugh. Ziggurat does all of it. This hand is pretty good at protecting itself. All right, I'm going to take the Risen Reef and hope to draw White Source. If they go for Awakener on turn two, I can Fatal Push it before combat. If they just evoke the Vesper Lark, then it is what it is. All right, come on, White Source. And if I have a White Source, I shut down their whole hand. All right, so, okay, I can actually Thought Seize Vesper Lark now. And, oh, is that Skelemental? Yikes. Don't like that. Uh, well, all right. I'm going to Thought Seize Vesper Lark. And I can Fatal Push Awakener. All right, there's that. You're dead. All right, deck. Alright, I'm getting hit with Skelemental right now.
There's Mariner. I don't think I knew about that one, but okay. Uh, <laughs> one lander punishing. So I think if they skeletal me here, yeah, there it is. Right, so I think that Fatal Push, or not Fatal Push, uh, Path to Exile. Can I afford to keep the white cards? Maybe I just need to ship the white cards. The Rest in Peace is really good if I draw anything. I feel like Extinction Event is my long-term plan. Uh, Liliana is pretty bad against Unsettled Mariner, but it's very good against Phantasmal Image. So, uh, I think maybe it's too late for Rest in Peace. Alright, Rest in Peace is going to go, and I think Extinction Event. Yeah, the Liliana just checks the Phantasmal Image in a good way. Like, if I draw a White Source for Rest in Peace, then it's also a White Source for Path to Exile, and I can path the thing that would be recurring from the graveyard. No! Oh, God. God, Flimkin Harbinger is so broken. Just get whatever you want. Right, Vesper Lark is back. Fuck. Alright, so Vesper Lark gets back Skelemental or Risen Reef. I'm going to concede. I can't actually win this game now. Uh, needed more lands than I had. That's part of the danger of keeping a one lander, but. Yeah. Harsh. Right, how many lands are actually in this deck? 24. Yeah, maybe I'm just supposed to, like, the earlier turns were really good. Like, I did have a clear path to pick apart everything they were doing. I had a potent sideboard card available. Just, uh, probably supposed to mulligan that anyway. I don't know. It's it's one of those close ones that you think about later, but I'm not actually sure. Like, with perfect hindsight, knowing I wasn't going to draw a land then obviously it's bad, but maybe you're just supposed to ship it anyway. Okay, here's the reverse problem. Um, I'm on the draw. I have two points of interaction. Do I trust my deck to produce action? Nah. Okay, whatever. So, adjusting to what to expect out of an opening hand in a mono black deck is kind of tricky because it doesn't work like normal magic like there is no opt there is no like there's a lot of things that are not coming to save you and you do have to trust the top of your deck some amount of the time yeah i mean if we're playing against uh, they're not a Luris deck so if they are a shadow deck it's not the stock Luris version. This is a pretty shadowy start. Yeah, so no early interaction sucks. Both of these cards being white sucks. Yeah, maybe I should have gone to five. Oh god. The mono black is punishing. So as far as they know, I drew two spells. Let's keep it that way. Maybe this is regular Jund, not even Shadow, just actual factual. All right, White Land. It's time for White White Land. All right, that's not a White Land, but it is something. We'll get some information out of it. Your hand is three lightning bolts and a blood braid elf. All right, I'll leave them with the ugly lightning bolt. 
Okay, well, we're getting blood braid elfed. Yeah, this is just regular old Jund. I'm going to lose my Kaya here. Or Lingering Souls. They want to linger so bad. Lingering Souls is a great card against Jund, traditionally. You just need to be able to put it on the stack for that to matter. All right. Gain another three life. I've cast two healing salves. Ooh, Croxa. I guess I'll take Lightning Bolt over Croxa, because if they want to make me discard Lingering Souls, that actually helps me. And I'm not going to put Croxa in their graveyard where they can just fire it back. Ugh. Okay. So I guess they can just lean into the Lingering Souls if they want to, or just continue to not play cards. Well, Lingering Souls does insulate you against Discard. There's at least that going on right now. But I guess 3, I go to 11, 8... I'm not very far away from just being dead anyway. Oh my god. Put it in my veins. Okay, Saul's. Okay, so now they actually have stuff to do, like... I've cast the fr the first Lingering Souls. So are they going to Crocs of the other one into my hand, into my graveyard? Probably. Or are they plus Liliana first, then they Crocs it to make sure I take the three? If they drew a red source, they can also just shortcut Crocs it straight into the graveyard. Yeah, that's what they did. I will trade off with Blood Raid Elf if they attack. Yeah, look how insane Lingering Souls was. Just casting Lingering Souls took me from miles behind to like reasonable board parity. But I wish it happened on turn three instead of turn six. Shambling vent's not bad. Ooh, there's the red source. Crocs is coming next turn. Do I thought sees? What do I think is in that hand? I'll get after it. They didn't play a land last turn, so I think this is a spell. Wake up. Alright, so Crox is going to arrive next turn. And the race is on, I guess. A Liliana of my own would be pretty cool. I mean, Fatal Push is solid here. Obliterator? Obliterator would be great. All right, and I'm guaranteed to take the three here. They're hellbent. Bloodraider. No, that's not a Bloodraider. Target creature gets minus two. I could just drain two, gain two. Though, this is actually worth more life in my hand than it is in play. Because Crocs is going to attack, and I would lose three life, and so I, I net one life. And their life total doesn't matter. Like, I need to save mine before I can worry about theirs. Alright, I have a lot of good draws, but running out of time. Uh, 
I don't think I have any like tacky swamps. It's just more watery graves. Uh, yeah, nothing special to do there. And Croxa is each uh, each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way. All right, so my only card in hand is a land, so I'm gonna play it because I take the three anyway. If they have a removal spell, I lose. I have to chump with Shambling Vent. And I go to two anyway, so if they have the fourth bolt, I'm dead. If they have Colgon's Command, I'm dead. Yeah, there we go. Fatal push, sure. All right, yeah, so that all, that game became kind of reasonable. Like, it became a top deck war, but it happened on turn six and seven when uh like if my stuff was functional on turn three i think i would have been pretty far ahead but is what it is um i kept the hand with two white guards and four swamps in it so this is a great arena matchup um i i like ashiok maybe i'm being overexcited because i just lost to croxa like, I have Path to Exiles, I have Fatal Push, like, I have removal spells for Croxa, I can chill my shit on the Ashiox. Arena's great, though. Exile, target, on land permanent. Anguish on making could be good, because they have Planeswalkers. Uh, Fulminator Mage could be solid, because they have uh, a pretty shaky mana base, but I don't think that's what this matchup is about. Uh, I could play Eradicator Valkyrie. Hexproof from Planeswalkers. That doesn't stop Liliana from sacrificing this. Lifelink's pretty good in this matchup, though. Alright, so if I'm bringing in these three, what am I taking out? In Kaya Solid, uh, I think the discard spells are pretty bad. They help early, but both of our decks are trying to get Hellbent and win a top deck war, basically. They're both built for that. So if you ha draw a discard spell later, they're pretty terrible. If that is the case, how low do I want to go on them? Like, I could go even lower and bring in Liliana the Last Hope. I could get Ashiok in here. I could get my... Fulminator Mages in here. All right, I'm going no discard. I'm off it. Maybe Extinction Event is better than Ashiok. I'm uh, messing with the Graveyard seems kind of important though, though not impacting the board is kind of bad. Eh, close call. Three drop tribal, let's do it. So, again, no white source. But I do have a lot of good stuff to do on three mana. I'm going to keep, and we're playing against Jund that's going to have discard spells anyway. So, this hand is different than the last hand in that there's a number of black cards that I want to play, unlike the last one where I didn't consider that two of my three cards were white. I still have a white card here. I have two draw steps to find land number three. Brutality. So I can just check their hand now. Let's see what they got. This might end up being terrible. But I'm going to try it. All right, Assassin's Trophy. They have Croxa, Elf, and three lands. All right, well, removing the trophy was actually huge because I would like to draw land right now. Yes. Let's go into the arena. This is not what your Jund opponent wants to see you do. 
This is way more important than Liliana the Last Hope on a board like this, by the way. So if they crocs on me, I think I'm going to discard Lingering Souls. I'm going to have to work through this spell bomb eventually, and I'll force them to have it right now. Yeah, Souls is definitely the, the discard. If they had a plan for their mana this turn, this is the plan now. Urborg does save them a life, though. Oh, they didn't even use it. <laughs> yeah, they could have tapped this for black with Urborg, but instead they tapped it for black, like, by itself. Nice. I found a white source. I'm going to plus on nothing. I don't think just randomly minusing makes sense, especially since I know they have Bloodbraid Elf coming. Swamp. All right, so they have two Verdant Catacombs in their hand. It's interesting that they didn't want to play those at any point when I had already seen them. Especially since Verdant Catacombs functions as Swamp with Urborg in play. Uh, Lightning Bolt. Okay, let's see if they if they commit to killing Liliana, then I will path the Bloodbraid Elf. If that was just like some random shit that left Liliana on one, like through combat, then I think I would have let Bloodbraid Elf live and just blocked it with Gary. But in this case, and this is sort of exposing me to the Croxa that I know is coming, but I, I do like having a Planeswalker when they don't. It's also two extra devotion for if I jam Gary this turn, draining for six is a lot better than draining for four. Fulminator Mage, that can fuck with the Raging Ravine. This attacks as a 4-4 four, four the first time. All right. Uh, no target. Yeah, I think I just want a Grey Merchant. Had my life total. I can chump Raging Ravine once, and then I'll have Fulminator Mage and Fatal Push to deal with it in the future. And that's assuming that they don't do anything else this turn. If they don't have a Haste Creature this turn, then Liliana's already fine. I can also just spew Liliana to get Grey Merchant back. I could wait a turn to do that anyway. I don't like their five cards in hand, but knowing that two of them are lands helps a little bit. So I have two spells. They have five cards, but two of them are lands. And Phyrexian Arena is at work. So I actually think I'm ahead both on cards and on board right now, even though they have more cards. Like, virtual. Ahead virtually on cards. Oh, they're thinking hard about this. I kind of hope they do just fire in with Raging Ravine. All right, they played yet another card that is not Verdant Catacombs. Like, they they have a Crox in their graveyard. Why are they sitting on these fetch lands so long? Like, if they had fetched twice this game, they would just have Crox available right now. All right, yep. Easy Chumpo. It's better in the graveyard than it is in play right now, anyway. But Phyrexian Arena is so busted. No target for that. So I can Liliana. I don't actually think Liliana is that good, though. Though. I think committing Liliana, like it, it fuels their Croxa, but I have a way to keep recuperating cards right now, and they don't. So I'm gonna keep pushing on this, and having the Fatal Push means I can clear the Raging Ravine and save the Fulminator Mage for the next round. Like, oh no! <laughs> All right, I'm losing one of my Planeswalkers this turn. 
Though they can't bring back Croxa and kill my Planeswalker, so they'll have to choose. Maybe I'm supposed to discard Fulminator Mage to Liliana to play around discard so I just have double push up. But I was planning for the best instead of for the worst, which might be not where you want to be. Like, I don't know, it's close. But the choice between putting Croxa into play and clearing a Planeswalker, all right, it looks like they're firing up Ravine. I think Lily the Last Hope is going to go, and Lily of the Veil is going to stick around. Because Last Hope can rebuy Gary starting this turn. I'm going to fetch for my other Godless Shrine right now. All the coast is clear. I'm just going to keep plussing. Like, I have this dead land in my hand, and, like, Croxa would deal three to me anyway. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to just hit their Raging Ravine before they get to their turn so they have less or fewer mana to work with. But, like, they don't need it to cast Croxa. I don't, know, I don't think it matters. Lilian is ready to minus on the Croxa. Yeah, I think having this 2 2 in play that just pressures their life total. Oh. Not anymore, it doesn't. Alright, now I regret not hitting the Raging Ravine because now they can also Croxa plus Tarmogoyf. So, punished for not acting in the order I was supposed to. Oh, interesting. They're not even doing Croxa. But I guess that makes sense. They can get an elemental here and two fresh cards. So that plays around Liliana of the Veil pretty well. Time for an obliterator. Come on, Jack. You're killing me. So they just had a land over there. My land doesn't matter. Yeah, so I would like to chump Tarmogoyf and zap Raging Ravine with Fulminator Mage this turn. I think Phyrexian Obliterator will shut this game down, but I do need to find one. I've drawn an extra card almost every turn of this game. Liliana can ultimate next turn, but they're obviously going to put damage on her, so uh, not actually counting on that. Just have to hope they didn't draw a way to remove Fulminator Mage right now. Because if they can kill Liliana straight up with Tarmogoyf and then also start pressuring me with the Pyromancer, that sucks. I do need to absorb six damage. Oh my god. Don't cast Lightning Bolt. Oh, fuck my life. Right off the top. Needed them to fade for a turn. They wouldn't give it to me. Alright, 6, 7, 8, 9. They... I guess they can't ignore Liliana. Or yeah, the Tarmogriff kills it straight up, so it doesn't matter. Alright, I need Phyrexian Obliterator. Lingering Souls is reasonable. So Anguished Unmaking. Yeah, Tarmogriffs didn't do more damage than that over the course of this game. Uh, Croxa can put me to four, and then Arena will put me to three. 
Dangerous territory. To be sure. I thought I was doing so well this game. That even drawing two cards a turn, I have drawn worse than my opponent. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Fuck my life. Alright, save me, deck. Uh, that's not it. Yep, just dead. Alright, I guess I'm not... Yeah, I'm just dead to Croxa. Even if I fatal push this, bring back Lingering Souls, the Croxa deals the three. Alright, can't beat that. <laughs> Rexian Obliterator, where were you? You would have won me this game so many times. There you are. Alright, next round. On the draw, what do you think about this one? <laughs> Based on the hands I've kept so far this league, it seems on par. I'm all in it, though. Okay, here's a keep. So... I think I want to ship Kaya. Or it's, it's Kaya or Basic Swamp. It's Basic Swamp, fuck it. Let's go. I'm on the draw. Or Boreal Grazer. So, Kaya can eat that. Alright, found my land. We're good. Can't lose now. Basically, I just have to hope that this Collective Brutality can strip a Summoner's Pact from their hand, and that they don't do anything else for the whole game. At least let me get my Obliterator into play. Uh, all right, explore. Okay, so they are more on the amulet side of things than the straight valicut side of things. Yeah, definitely need to clip a summoner's pact here because if their hand just has the prime time in it, we're fucked. Uh, target opponent reveals their hand. I don't think discarding Lingering Souls to escalate matters. Like, I don't think two life's going to be the dis difference. Uh, Azusa and Dryad. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, the complete whiff on that one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. If they draw a land, they can just dome me for... A million. And yeah, they can just zap me for six if they drew a land for the turn. And they did. Uh, they are hellbent though, so I'll take that for now. Not that it matters. Who would have thought? Oh, where was this last turn? If I literally cast Inquisition last turn, strip the Dryad, and then collect a Brutality this turn on Azusa, you never lose. But instead, here we are. So what I need to do is for them to never draw another land. Definitely never draw a Primeval Titan. Kaya does not even gain life right now. Exile a permanent. Converted mana cost one or less. Uh, I guess Lingering Souls saves me the most damage right now. So I need to draw a land, jam, obliterator, and them never... <laughs> <laughs> Remember last turn where I checked their hand for that card? Alright, I'm 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 literally dead. I am just dead to uh, shots from Valakut right now. So that's, that's is, uh, comes with the territory of playing mono black. Like, sometimes you Inquisition and you can't take their four drops. Like last game when I saw their hand of three lightning bolts and a bloodbraid elf. Sometimes you have Inquisition when you need Thoughtseize. Sometimes you Thoughtseize and lose two life when Inquisition would save you. Sometimes Collective Brutality misses and then you draw Inquisition the next turn. And yep, <laughs> it comes with the territory. It sucks, but it is what it is. So 
things that matter in this matchup include all of these land destruction options, non-land permanent. All right, that just that gets rid of primeval titan at least. Uh, Path to Exiles, fine. Fatal Push is okay. Uh, Brutality sucks, and we saw why. Kaya doesn't do anything in this matchup. Akletus gains life. The, the discard is important. I think Fatal Push is kind of medium. Lingering Souls is also kind of medium. Okay, here's my deck. Let's hope it's good. All right, let's hope it lines up right, is what I'm saying. Uh, we definitely have the tools to win this matchup and most matchups. They just have to show up in the correct order, and we have no control over what that order is. So I'm going to keep this Ashiok hand. Like Ashiok is the most important card in the matchup. I need a third land. A uh, discard spell would be nice, but got to do what we got to do here. Nice. All right. So this fetch land turns on Fatal Push too. So if they go for a Dryad this turn or Azusa, I can kill it. All right. So there's Azusa. All right, I guess I'm just going to Ashiok and hope it's good. I didn't bring in Blood Moon. They're obviously not playing it. So, I mean, there's no reason to get a basic over Godless Shrine there. Might as well save two life for when I draw the Godless Shrine later. Right. There's no reason to exile their graveyard. I'm just going to sit Ashiok here on maximum loyalty. Hopefully it doesn't just die to Valakut triggers this turn. Rumbling Vestige. Okay, that is, makes mana. Alright, Rot Farm is not Valakut. Alright, none of those cards are Valakut, so... <laughs> We're good for a minute. Uh, the backup Ashiok. Not what I'm looking for. I could hang on to... I'm trying to figure out how I can do two, cast two spells in a way that matters, and I'm not sure that I can. Pretty sure I just want a path... Dryad in their upkeep. Maybe I should have un used Anguished on making this turn and save up the path as a one mana answer to prime time on future turns. Yeah, I don't love how I played that. Three cards left in their hand. Can't search. All right, we got one card at least that missed your rainforest. Looking bad. Getting to work on Ashiok. Okay. I will now cast a card that's capable of winning a game. It can at least turn sideways and deal damage. Which is something I don't think I've done since the Gifted Aetherborn in round one. And now this Fatal Push turns into Zombos. Makes it even better. I can Lingering Souls and leave up Fatal Push. Fulminator Mage, I like that. Yeah, Fulminator turns on Fatal Push. If I need to kill Azusa or make a zombie at any sort of instant speed.
I don't think I need to just shoot off any of these random lands. I think saving it for a Valakut or a Slayer Stronghold makes sense. Just attacking for two is a thing that I can do with Fulminator Mage in the meantime. I, that's not even true. They have Arboreal Grazer. All right. Their hand keeps getting smaller. All right. No more secrets. Show me the Summoner's Pact. Oh, just Primeval Titan and Teleria West. Why haven't they cast Primeval Titan? A 6-6 six, six isn't bad on this board. But you're the expert. I'm not going to attack with Fulminator Mage. It can block Azusa when pressuring Ashiok. And I'll linger. I think I have room to get some souls into play based on what's in their hand. Unless they draw some sort of clean answer to Ashiok that also lets them cast Primeval Titan. But even then I have the Fulminator Mage to break up most of the most busted things they could do. I feel like I would have cast my 6 6 trample by now, but I'm not an amulet player. Oh, this card has reach! I've been betrayed. Alright, Fulminator Mage missed an attack there. So I'm going to figure out if I have a lethal attack this turn. So if I Fatal Push Arboreal Grazer, I get a 2-2. Two, two, and then, all right, yeah, they're, they're just packing it up. Okay, so Ashiok did the Lord's work there. I don't think anything about my deck changes. I just need to get Ashiok into play and keep it there. I mean, Valkyrie is a flying lifelink creature, but I don't think that's what this matchup's going to be about at the end of the day. Inquisition of Kozlak is actually kind of bad, though. It, it's good in the early turns and drops off quickly. But especially on the draw, I think having every early point of interaction is important. Yeah, I'm just going to submit my deck. Ooh, Dried of the Elysian Grove is an enchantment. So maybe I've already submitted my deck and mode is loading, but maybe I was supposed to have disenchant in the deck just in case. Grazer. So I kept the hand on the strength of Ashiok again. I'm going to get my white sources online. Let's hope it's not too late. They don't care about Colony Garden. Pretty sure I want a path in their upkeep so they don't get two land drops off. Dryad. Really wish I had a thought seize there. Oh wait, could I have? I could have shocked in and fatal pushed the the Dryad. I should have done that because now Path isn't going to be able to answer Primeval Titan. Yeah, I definitely could have played better. But Ashiok's coming down this turn. Oh, might be too late. So they get Azusa here. Or Tireless Tracker. All right, yeah, they're just totally changing plans. I'm going to draw a bunch of cards instead of do anything else. 
Wow, yeah, that card's going to be really good against me. And even if I draw the Fulminator Mage, they have 4 mana. And this thing can kill Ashiok next turn. Wow, that's good. That's hot technology. Some way to turn on Revolt would be nice. I mean, pivoting into Obliterator is pretty cool. We're almost there. Like, they're going to have to spend their next turn paying for their Pact. So a bunch of their mana is going to be tied up, but they are going to get to draw a card with the clue at the end step. Pay for Pact, draw another card with clue if they want to. Bash for 5. They're sweating me in my draw step, though. We'll never know. I get to keep playing or not. But yeah, so I managed to completely fuck up this game by not chalking in that fatal push. Like if I had end step fatal pushed the uh dryad, then they play tireless tracker that turn. I path it, and then I untap and jam Ashiok. So I have just thoroughly fucked up this game by missequencing my removal spells. This draw was pretty good though, this gifted Aetherborn, just having a death touch creature to put in front of Tireless Tracker is not bad. Uh, uh oh. They have one card left in their hand. So I guess I have to play Ashiok and just let my death touch creature protect me from the tireless tracker. And even if they can remove my creature that will turn on fatal push, like Valakut is the scariest thing that they could have because of the Dryad. And if I draw a fetch land, I can fetch, kill, Dryad, cast Ashiok. My opponent's really into these long pauses in my draw, my upkeep, sweating me on my draws. Wonder if they're multi queuing. Or if they just know that I need to rip. All right, there's Ashiok now. That takes off some pressure, though. Until I remove this Dryad, Valakut is a just imminent threat. Oh god, they have multiple of this card. Wish I brought an Extinction Event. Which I did not. It's right there. Yeah, they're like, I don't even care about searching my deck. I'll just draw my deck. Gains double strike. Uh, they don't have the ability to activate that, so that's good. All right, let's obliterate. So if they find a red source, they can activate this sun home, but that doesn't help against obliterator. It does help against gifted Aetherborn. Yeah, I mean, like, having a parade of obliterators is not bad. Oh, this is scary, though. Uh, the death touch, or the double strike, first strike damage will happen, kill whatever creature it's in front of, which will turn on revolt before normal strike damage. Do you have attacks? 
do have attacks. Interesting. Yeah, I was about to say, what's this Dryad doing in the red zone? I'm going to block and block. So they're going to have to sack five permanents. They're going to lose both of their trackers. And it, this combat turns on Fatal Push. And I have a follow-up obliterator. Wow, they just keep popping clues. Every time they do that, they have to sack more permanents to obliterator. And those are less permanents, or fewer permanents that they could have to sacrifice to obliterator also. Alright, so let's let this resolve. Sack seven permanents. Oh no, this does survive combat. Okay, that makes sense. Because it's bigger than Obliterator, which doesn't have Death Touch all on its own. Uh, whoops, cancel. I don't know if selecting the mode actually matters much. So I'm going to destroy Dryad while we're still in combat, because this next Obliterator can just eat their entire board if they can't answer it cleanly. Adventure. Obstinate bee. All right. That's a solid creature. All right, let's obliterate again. Boom. All right, let's see you attack again. Remember last turn when they had like 20 permanents in play? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. All right, this obliterate or this tracker is becoming a bit of a problem. Maybe I'm supposed to destroy that with Fatal Push last turn? I don't know. Oh, no attack. I'm going to leave this uncracked in case I draw Fatal Push. It's interesting they didn't play the Obstinate Baloth, didn't crack any clues. I guess if they... Crack clues, those are more permanents they have to discard to tracker. They're just building up an enormous board here. And I have to block the tracker because Ashiok, I'm sure, is the only thing keeping me in this game at all. But they don't want to attack. Ooh. Fulminator Mage, that's great. Now I have just another tool. I don't think playing Urborg does anything good for me. It does leave the bluff of Fatal Push up a little longer. Alright, 6-6 six, six creature in play. Uh, this, this tracker is so good. Yeah, someday they'll figure out to just attack with it. I think they have plenty of permanence. There it is! Alright, I'll play the Urborg now. I'm not even bluffing anymore. Now if they make a big attack... They'll just get eaten up. And maybe I'm supposed to destroy this before they make another land drop because all those clues are relevant. So 
So this is attacking Ashiok. I can double block this and All right, yeah, because it has trample, they're going to sacrifice exactly five permanents. All right, so do I want to? All right, I think I want to let this resolve before I make any other decisions. Yeah, because they, they just pile on clues. Then I can destroy tracker. Like if I fatal push tracker before they sack their permanents, then they might know they need to keep these clues around for a little while. All right, um, now I want a fatal push. And I guess with Fulminator Mage in play, I don't need to hold up Marsh Flats to keep Fatal Push on anymore. Yeah, now they're on just cast 6-6s, six which I feel like would have won last game too. But they finally committed to doing it. Time to draw another Obliterator. Definitely fetching now, thinning as much as I can. That's not great. Take the Pact. Vesuva, Celestia Sanctuary, Forest. All right, so their hand's not particularly scary. If I minus Ashiok... Like, I'm going to lose it anyway, but I guess they could commit one less attack to it if I minus. Like, Bailoff becomes lethal on it by itself, plus 6 minus 2 is 4. So it makes my blocks a lot worse. They have to commit more if they want to kill Ashiok this turn. Like, yeah, they wouldn't have had to make this attack. So I think that... I just have to let it go. I could double block Obstinate Bailoth. Then I lose Fulminator Mage. But I think I'm struggling against this 4 4 anyway. I could also block. Like, I could block Primeval Titan with Shambling Vent. Ashiok survives at one for another turn. That's another combat phase they don't get. And I get to destroy something with Fulminator Mage now. It's that or it's double block Fulminator. Or double block Bailoth. Alright, I'm going to do it this way. I think Ashiok is doing more for me than any of these individual creatures. Uh, all of these cards are mostly the same. So I'm gonna just going to blow up Sun Home. That's the one that is a different thing. And now I have to draw Obliterator. Twice in a row. Ha! <laughs> well... Ashiok's dying anyway. Might as well zap them. Just in case I hit all their Valakuts or something. Back up Ashiok. Looking good. Though it's not actually looking good. It actually looks really bad. Oh shit. Now I'm in trouble. So now they actually get to search. So they can get Teleria West and uh, Bounce Land to pick it up. Yeah, that's what they did. 
I take 10. I'm just going to take 10. And then they can transmute Teleria West for Summoner's Pact. Or do you just get Valakut at this point? I don't know how this works. They could just Pact for another Titan next turn. Oh, they got Pact of Negation. That's even worse. Yeah, I'm just dead on board. Hey, sweet. That gives me Ashiok back. Not that it matters much. I'll take that. So Ashiok dying no matter what. Uh, do I minus? Yeah. And right, I got rid of a Valakut. <laughs> Not I could have attacked for three there, but their life total is so far away it doesn't matter. And that lets them make a smaller attack on Ashiok. Yeah, I've definitely been overpowered just by green creatures this match. The the tireless tracker technology was insane. Extinction event might be able to get me out of this. Alright. I'm dead. Not literally, but close enough. They're going to actually trigger a Primeval Titan this turn. Bummer. That was exciting. Phyrexian Obliterator is great. Unfortunately, we needed three or four of them instead of the two that we had. And I'm on the play in round four with a hand that has two different points of interaction and some early threats, which is this is the most coherent hand we've seen out of this deck yet. I'm so bummed out still from last round when the tireless tracker is just happens to be a permanent that generates more permanence. Oh, my opponent's on four. It's not a good place to be against the Inquisition of Kozilek deck. Let's see if there are like some broken deck like Dredge that functions on four or if they just are unlucky. Okay, so I'll take Stoneforge Mystic and their hand is bad now. Yeah, my opponent, they said they like my legacy content. They are in fact off to a rough start this match, as they said. So, my Aetherborns are coming. They have many gifts. The fact that they took Gifted Aetherborn instead of Fatal Push means that they didn't top deck a second Stoneforge Mystic. Alright, so their hand is Forest and a Mystery. So I think I want to play the Marsh Flats. Like the Silent Clearing, using Silent Clearing to draw a card is fine, but my deck is full of four drops and five drops. So like, what's the rush? All right, cool. And leaving up the fetch land for Fatal Push is going to work out nicely here. Bang. All right, now it's just a different two-power creature. This one without lifelink. Do you even thought seize the one-card hand? I guess you have to. Burden Catacombs, yep. You got me. Mall to four pays off. It's like they unmulliganed because they just got a card off me. So if they draw Collected Company right now, I just lose. Just straight up dead. Ooh, that changes things. Do you have Collected Company? Thank you for not having Collected Company. 
Aha! When the opponent mauls to four and you hit them with Inquisition of Kozilek on the play, this deck looks pretty good. But then you draw both copies of your legendary permanent. Let's get your graveyard out of here. Obliterator. Nice. All right, so there's some sort of Abzan Stoneforge Mystic deck. Abzan Creatures. And presumably Collected Company is probably in there because it's just really good. Saw a lot of fetch lands and Stoneforge Mystic, but I'm not sure if Ashiok is where I want to be in a deck like this that needs to stay on the board. If I were playing a blue deck, I would bring in probably one or two Ashioks against them just as another way to pressure their what they're doing. But I don't think that's what a deck like mine is supposed to be doing. So Extinction Event... Anguished on making Phyrexian Arena all look good. Liliana, the last hope. So, I saw creatures, but not like a lot of X1 creatures. I don't know if they actually have mana creatures in this deck. Kaya didn't seem super important. I can also probably shave on discard spells. Right, yeah, I'm going to do this. I didn't get to see what they're really up to other than, like, I saw a bunch of fair cards, so I'm not going to board in, like, rest in peace unless I see a combo. Oh, here's this again. This is a hand with multiple points of meaningful interaction with one land. Uh, also, the interaction doesn't start till turn two. I think if this was Godless Shrine, I might keep it, but I'm going to mulligan as it stands. Uh, okay. I'm going to send Gary to the bottom because it's a 5 drop. Like I, I'm i gambling that I will draw a white source before I draw 3 more lands. I won the gamble. They kept 7 this time. That's unfortunate for me. Okay, that doesn't cast on Forge Mystic. Do I care about Scavenging Ooze? Not urgently. I'll just put a Death Touch creature in front of that. They can't Skyclave Apparition next turn because they don't have white, and that costs double white, so... Unless they have, like, Fetid Heath or some double filter land. I'm not worried about that. This does seem like the type of fair matchup where Liliana of the Veil vale is pretty nice. Uh-oh, that's a 2-2. Two, two. What do you know that I don't? This is a 2-3. Oh, that's what they know. Okay. They were not a fool. They just took their trade. All right, so my Liliana versus your Liliana. Is that the game I want to play? Probably. All right, uh, get out of here, Path to Exile. I have a second one. I can't cast two in a turn anyway, and Liliana can minus to remove things. And I do want to get on the board. Okay. Nice. Okay, I no longer care about Gifted Aetherborn. I'm here to obliterate. Discarded a path. I hope they regret that. Alright, they didn't have a second. No! Alright, I'm going to die to this Lilian emblem. I need to draw my Anguished on making. Oh, I can actually minus my Liliana next turn, but 
even if I give them like their Liliana and everything else as the two piles, they're still just going to win because the emblem is worth everything. Yeah, I need to dry anguish on making. Well. Here we go. Yeah, I can't beat this emblem. It doesn't matter. If I had gotten to this spot a turn earlier... Oh, wow. They want to play <laughs> nicer than I expected. Lingering Souls. Shit. The good news is if they draw a creature, they're going to want to play it before they make us both discard cards. Oh, now their Liliana's ready to pop. Lingering Souls. This game is so much better because they kept this Liliana than this one. Like, I would just be dying to the emblem. So this is just going to be like a pick three kind of thing. I think I want to keep my three lands. If they have a creature right away to put the sword on... Uh... Alright, deck. It's time. Can we win an Obliterator matchup? Land, 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 yes! Alright, what's that last last card over there? They didn't equip their sword. Oh no, they have Assassin's Trove. Uh... Okay, now I'm gonna just die to Sword of Fire and Ice. Uh, I get a couple draw steps here. I get my draw step plus Silent Clearing to remove this Tarmogoyf, and maybe there's still a game, but this extra card is gonna be bad news for me. Right, pass the turn. Don't play a second creature. All right, this turns off my edicts. Oh god, that's a good second creature too. All right, the dream is over. Okay, I mean, this fatal push at least saves me a hit from the sword. I don't know what's happening right now. I feel like I should have lost this game seven turns ago. I, I'm still losing this game, but I feel like it should have happened sooner. How many obliterators do I have left? Is it one or two? So, one, two down, two to go. Still my best draw. Never not. All right, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I am exactly dead if I play that card. All right, that was a sweet match, or a sweet game. So on the play, I think my Inquisition gets better on the play. Kaya can exile germ tokens, but I still don't think that's great. Lingering Souls is great in this matchup. Um, their Liliana was very good. I think this deck is mostly... As good as it can get right now. Oh, Collective Brutality is not great. Yeah, I can't kill a Stoneforge Mystic on the play, so... Or maybe Disenchant should just be in over a Collective Brutality. Disenchant's awkward because there's so much discard in the matchup, and the artifacts and enchantments come up so specifically. But they are important to remove if I can. Okay, so I get to Inquisition twice... The double tap land's a little awkward, but hopefully I have the ability to work through it. Ooh, unearth. That's hot. So if I take a creature, they just get it on turn one instead of on turn two. So I guess I 
am required to take the unearth. Wow, that's hot. Maybe I just take Liliana and don't worry about unearth. Just don't give him the option. Deck is kind of built to beat through creep to fight through creatures, so at least remove the thing that's not one of those. And now they have to sort of play off mana. If I take Stoneforge Mystic here, but then they get to double spell on turn three, but they need another land before they can do that. So which of these, oh, they don't have green mana. That's a big deal. I'm going to take the Stoneforge Mystic. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah, so their hand doesn't have green, so if they want to unearth Stoneforge Mystic, they have to play off curve to do it. All right, and that gets the unearth out of the way. Yeah, that's not bad. So I'm not exactly, like, guns blazing here to deal with the Stoneforge Mystic either. Someday. So Skyclave Apparition does cleanly answer Phyrexian Obliterator, much to my abject misery. Another one. Okay. There's that disenchant that I said may or may not be any good. It looks like it's going to get a chance to be good. I would like to draw a land so I could double spell the back end of souls and the disenchant. Nice. And I should start attacking. I'm used to playing Legacy Blue decks where Sword of Fire and Ice just makes cards straight up unblockable, but I have a lot of white creatures available to me. I actually don't have any blue or red in the whole deck, so it's just plus two plus two plus the extra abilities. Bee Skull. I think I just want to roast it now before they can pick it up. So I think running out Kalidus to just get Skyclave Apparitioned makes sense. You offer me this double block, I'm going to take it. Because uh, I have to get through this Apparition eventually, unless I draw a discard spell to clear it. Our path for Tarmogoyf is nice. Maybe I just take to the skies. Race them in the air. The scavenging ooze gains life in a way that I don't love. Oh, scavenging ooze. Oh, they don't have double green. So if they draw a green source, they can eat my souls before it's too late. <laughs> eat my soul. But yeah, I need them to not draw a green source this turn. That would be great. I'm probably going to path the Tarmogoyf. Just not... Maybe not right away. But... Ah, uh, fuck. But they have to shock if they want a green source off of that. So... I want to path to exile the Tarmogoyf. I think my plan to win this game involves just attacking in the air three times. I can take one damage from Stoneforge Mystic. So if this is a green source, they're going to take two to do it. And they don't gain life from eating my souls. And then I jam Kalidus, and they jam... Ooh. Yeah, so... I play Kalidus, they play 
Skyclave Apparition. They have a fatal push, okay. Alright, so yeah, I, I play Kalidus, they play Apparition, I play Obliterator, and then I'm behind that for the rest of the game. They're also dead on board to my spirits. Uh, that's not true. They can eat creatures with ooze, so they're not quite dead on board. It's just not good for them. There's that. The ooze is going to have to eat something for them to stay alive. And they can't tap Silent Clearing for mana, or else they lose the life they would gain with Ooze. Yeah, we're just playing some, like, 2010 Modern here. <laughs> Our Lingering Souls is flying over an Abzan deck. Alright, not bad. Lingering Souls, we're on the board! Alright, playing for our half our money back guarantee. On to the last round. And I'm on the play here with reasonable hand. I'll keep this. So, I can, my deck doesn't really have two drops, so, like, other than Gifted Aetherborn, the deck doesn't really do anything on two, so I think I actually want to Inquisition turn one, and I'll play Shambling Vent on turn two, and just set up for turn three. The alternative is Inquisitioning on turn two, so I have more information, but there's a lot of modern decks that are pretty reliant on their turn one plays. Oh no, I can't take Boom. Uh, pretty sure Pillage is the card that I don't want to play against here. We're up against something crazy. Alright. <laughs> this is going to be a match. If I draw my third land on time, I got Phyrexian Arena into play, I'm going to feel like wildly favored. But if I miss, I'm probably dead. Oh god. Well, at least I drew a Duress. So I can take their Boom Bust. Unless they drew another Stone Rain. Cleansing Wildfire. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Boom Bust is the card that I need to take. That Season Pyromancer is bad, though, but they also don't have another land, but they do have Maze Mind Tome that can scry twice before they get there. Ugh. Yeah, missing that land is an absolute disaster. Alright, I made the right call taking Boom Bust, though. They found an indestructible land. So they would have been able to kill one of my lands for free when I'm already missing land drops. No thank you. Okay. Alright, let's do the damn thing. Now we're in business. Maze Mind Tome versus Phyrexian Arena. Like Garfield intended. And it has four counters on it. It goes away. Alright. You gain how much life? Four. Wow. Is the Pyromancer, yep. Probably going to discard the Wrath of God. I don't see that coming up this game. Oh, they kept the Wrath of God and discarded the Helix. I would have done the opposite. But I guess maybe they're on the level where they know about Phyrexian Obliterator. Okay, so... I am going to cast this with Escalate, discarding Lingering Souls. Cast with two modes, duress mode and minus two mode. Yes. You, you, discard lingering souls. Uh, I, I'm going to take pillage. I'm much more worried about that than Wrath of God. I'll deal with the Wrath eventually, but it's not an issue. 
bottomed with tome. There's the other cataracts. This was a uh, fuck. This was a rough deck to keep the two lander against that needed to get to three. But I did get to three. I do have the arena. They're going to get to draw an extra card with Tome this turn, but then Tome is gone. Uh, Wrath of God is the only card in their hand, so I'm not going to cast Inquisition. Oh, this is bad. So if they don't destroy a land for a turn or two, I might be okay. If they just, like, pass the turn here. Alright, yes, I would like to do that. I do have a lot of basic lands in my deck, at least. So that card isn't great. No! That's the kind of shit that I needed to not happen. Uh, oh, did I forget to flashback Lingering Souls last turn? Could I have done that? <laughs> Whoops. Alright, let's get that Wrath of God out of their hand, I guess. Yeah, this Maze Mind Tome being actual draw card mode. I needed my arena to pull ahead because they're so far ahead on every other metric. The cards is the only thing I'm beating them on. A crazy deck. I wonder if they play Golos just to do something else with the Cascading Cataracts or if it's literally only there because it's indestructible. White Source for Kaya would be pretty dope. Like that, Kaya is the type of card that could win this game on her own. Then they have to start crunching with Needle Spires. And that ties up a lot of their mana. Though they have a lot of mana to tie up. Guess I can check your hand. There's one card I don't know about. Sacred Foundry, alright. All right, I'm winning. One, two, three, four. They could attack with Needle Spires. I don't know if they would want to expose a land straight to Fatal Push like that. But if they go for it, they're going to see loud and clear that I don't have Fatal Push. That means I should be careful about F6-ing, though. Like, I should at least represent that I have a play to make. Hello, hello. Alright, so now I'm going to start Kaya-ing. They don't have any creatures. Uh, I'm going to lead back my spirits, because... I want to be able to block Needle Spire. Oh, fuck. They had CCPZ in the graveyard. I forgot about that. I didn't even target it, but I definitely should have. <laughs> God, my vision's not what it once was. I looked up and down that whole graveyard, didn't see any creatures, and then was like, oh, well, oh, oh, oh. turned out they had a, not only a creature, but a creature with an important graveyard ability. But I leveled them by targeting different things. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep the pressure off of this. And then I can souls with flashback next turn to keep fighting against the needle spires. Maybe I don't even need to flashback. Like I just souls, because I know about the wrath of God. They can one, two, one, two, three, four, wrath, one, two, three. Yeah, they can wrath plus activate spires if they want to. Oh shit. That's a card. Oust. Alright, yeah. That doesn't oust. There's no targets for that. That's a good one, though. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to Gary just to not die. Oh, they discarded the wrath. They gave up. A little too late. So Inquisition you. Let's get a peek. Don't freeze up on me now. Alright, take the pillage. So their hand is just flagstones. And then... Exile two cards from a graveyard. Do I have any creatures in the graveyard? Because gaining life does matter. I don't have creatures in the graveyard right now. They don't have creatures in their graveyard either. I don't think I can afford to shock in a white source. So I'm just going to jam Obliterator. And then I can Gary for a Foxillion next turn. Assuming they don't find an oust or a path. This Chandra is pretty scary. It's mostly because they're drawing two cards a turn. Like, that's what I'm really worried about. Alright, it was a land. No worries. No! been ousted this goes off at seven so i have another turn to play through that but they can needle spires and kill kaya right now or five six seven they could even like needle spires and just pressure me they don't even need to kill kaya stupid oust All right, well, next turn I can play Obliterator with Path to Exile still up. Ooh. Oh, Obliterator. So Gifted Aetherborn is a lifelink creature. Do I think that's more important than holding up Path? Uh, no, I think getting on board is more important than most things right now. I hope there's still a basic swamp left. There should be several. All right, we're good. I am pretty scared of that Chandra. So one, two. You put me to five. This puts me to four. If they fire up both needle things, Oh wow, they could boom bust? That's bad though. Yeah, that doesn't help them. Oh, they can bust my white source, which actually does hurt me quite a bit. That's interesting though, this decision between taking me off white or dealing two damage to me on this board right now. It's closer than one might think. Okay, no, they just took me off white. It's not close. They're like, fuck it. Oh, you don't have another spell. Stop. Oh, come on. The Wrath of God. I played around that card the whole game, and you top deck it this fucking turn. All right, it's fine. Do I have any out to this, Chandra? Uh, so I can play another Obliterator, hope that they don't draw any spell. Okay, so if they have any spell, they can emblem up. And I'm dead to my arena trigger. So just draw a land, just draw a land. And we actually might still have a game because I can Gary for a lot next turn. Oh, they're tapping mana. That's bad for me. Maybe they're just exiling their young pyromancer. Nope. They not only had a spell, but it was a good one. Okay. I feel like I did everything I was supposed to do that game and just they had the Wrath of God on that last turn. Okay, so Phyrexian Arena is good. 
Anguished Unmaking is good. I feel like Eradicator... Er, is Eradicator? Yes, Eradicator Valkyrie. If there's a matchup for it, it's this one. Uh, Liliana the Last Hope is also a permanent that can win the game on its own. So I think these are all cards I want. Fatal Push and Path to Exile. Uh, Path can exile an animated Gideon. Fatal Push and kill animated creature lands. I just don't think this is a Fatal Push matchup. Uh, Camball Council of Allocation. That could buy me some important space to breathe. Stony Silence can turn off Maze Mind Tome. Uh, Fulminator Mage, I could get them with a dose of their own medicine. <laughs> I don't think that's where I want to be at all. Liliana of the Veil. She doesn't seem great, other than keeping them Hellbent, which I guess is an important part of the matchup. So do I want Camball? And if so, what am I cutting are my final questions here. I think no. All right. This is my deck. That's one turn away from Heartbreak for several, several turns that game. <laughs> Can you mulligan a hand with three obliterators in it? Got to find a couple of lands over the course of the game. Pillage, and is that Helix? Yeah, Pillage, Helix, and there is, uh, there is the turn two boom with a indestructible land. That sucks. Lands, lands, lands. If I just draw lands for like my next 14 turns, I'll be pretty happy about it. So I'm going to get a basic swamp here. Even though I don't have a white source yet, I think they're just going to take the turn two boom anyway. Unless they think lightning helixing is more important, but I can't imagine that that's the case. Like, why would you build your deck in a way that can cast Boom on turn two if you're not going to do it? You just Helix next turn. Two life doesn't matter. This is a, a tough opponent for the final round of the league where we were struggling to develop our mana the entire time. I don't think this deck would play Blood Moon, but if it does, we are never casting a spell. So they have the Helix if they want it. Like Boom and Wildfire are both insane here. Yeah, they just started tapping mana, then remembered Helix is an instant. Kaya was a great draw. This gives me something to do this turn. I am going to shock and Godless Shrine, just keeping my white sources available. It's going to be important, maybe. Okay, so let's uh, just draw a land next turn and begin the parade. Fuck yeah. All right, so we've seen Oust, Path to Exile. Or, no, we haven't seen Path, right? We've seen Oust and Wrath of God. But I'm ready to smash. I hope their hand is three Lightning Helixes. These base mine tomes are so good. Uh, yep, Wrath. But at least these are one-for-one one Wraths. Like, 
the obliterator, obliterator really is a must kill. And I'm not going to take a turn off to Thought Seize them. If I draw another land, I'll Thought Seize then Obliterator in the future, but for now, I just want to keep my 5-5s five coming. Oh, they topped that card. That sucks. And if they do have Path to Exile instead of Oust, then that's good for me. Uh, yes. So cleansing wildfire. It at least removed my creature land for them, but didn't take me back lands. <laughs> also, day of judgment. Another one. You know, for having Phyrexian Obliterator on turn 5, 6, and 7 of this game, my opponent is certainly still in it. Alright, they bottomed a card. There's a chance. Show me that bottom again. Alright, they bottomed again. Two Lightning Helixes in hand. Show it to me. All right, crack Sunbay Canyon and pass the turn. Ooh. Let's get in there, see what happens. I probably should have thought these before combat in case they have something like um, a Blessed, whatever it's called, Blessed Alliance. The thing that uh, makes you sack an attacking creature. Oh, Kaya goes off at 5. I thought she went off at 7. I was thinking of Liliana. I should have zapped them like a turn ago. So they're probably going to draw a card right away, digging for the oust. But I am going to... Kaya is lethal this turn with Obliterator's help. Pyromancer. All right, so they discard 1 and draw 2. So they can only get 1... All right, they got zero tokens, so they're dead. Path to Exile even counts the old Pyromancer for Kaya. Bang. And zap you. Bitch for 12. Alright, the steady parade of threats was good, though my opponent is really good at answering threats. Holy crap. So, rest in peace, disenchant, stony silence. Uh, are any of these good? I don't think rest in peace is. Like, I think... The uh, whatever they get off of Season Pyromancer in the graveyard is not worth what I lose with Lingering Souls and Kaya. So that's a no to that. Stony Silence in Maze Mind Tome is really good. Is I think I need all my discard spells though. What would I cut if I bring that in? And I don't think there's a good answer. Like maybe Grey Merchant? Actually, maybe Great Merchant is worse than Stony Silence. Because Great Merchant does require you to have a bunch of permanents in play, and my opponent's very good at removing permanents from play. So no discard spell. That makes me nervous. Two Path to Exile feels like I'm already on six. I'm going to mulligan this. All right, that's a keep. I think Kalidus goes to the bottom. That's a 4-drop that doesn't do a whole lot for the matchup. Alright, I have Arena, which is 
one of my best cards in the match. Alright, so Cleansing Wildfire, Helix. So they can't... Oh, I'm going to take the Maze Mind home. They kept his hand on the strength of Maze Mind home, and I hope I can punish them for it. Like, they can't cast that Wildfire, and they're pretty far away from anything else. Alright, I gotta draw my third land this turn. Gotta turn this hand on. Brexian Arena, FT Dubs. Uh, they're gonna get a Planeswalker next turn. Nice. I'm surprised they didn't wildfire their own land that turn to ramp into the Planeswalkers. Like, is killing Aetherborn right now that important? Uh-oh. Nahiri can exile enchantments. I might have fucked up. Okay, no. Because they didn't ramp, they can't exile that right away. But Nahiri can exile that next turn. So now, now I guess the question is, do I get Liliana working? Yeah, and I think I do, because if I play Liliana this turn, start ticking her up, they have to play Nahiri this turn to exile Arena, and then, like, Gideon, anything that creature that they would put into play to pressure Liliana, I can start doing the souls after that. All right. I guess if I had played Souls this turn, though, I would have already been pressuring Nihiri. Uh, do I Brutality or Souls here? I think I... Brutality. Alright, so they have... Old Pyromancer, a second Nihiri, and Gideon. Yeah, I'm just going to try to chase this Liliana to the top of the mountain. Needle Spires was a very good draw. If I draw a land and can double souls, I'm going to feel pretty good about this. There's Gideon. Ooh. So, Obliterator does not line up well against Gideon. Actually, yeah, it does. All right. It's Obliterator time. I'm going to make them have it. Yeah, so I can block Gideon with Obliterator. They lose a bunch of permanents. They can put some serious pressure on Liliana this turn. The Pyromancer is kind of worrisome because they get to draw two fresh cards and they have a ton of mana. All right, they them activating Gideon before they do anything else is kind of loose because if they find Wrath of God this turn, now they lose a token for no reason. Season Pyromancer, leaving up mana for Wrath of God. Just don't draw Oust, for fuck's sake. Also, but if they do draw Oust, because they already activated Gideon, they can't go into 5-5 five five mode. So, mistakes have been made this turn, I think it is safe to say. Nahiri goes off at 8. Uh, and they had Boom. Okay. I can live with a Boom. So, shrink this so I don't have to fight it. Lily goes off at 7, so I just need to survive this turn with Liliana still around, basically. I'm not going to attack. I 
I guess this uh, Nahiri, maybe I should have given some more respect to, but I have flying attackers. So they can like fire up Needle Spire, try to take Liliana off ultimate. Like I don't even care about their land destruction at this point because my permanents are already winning the game. God, what the fuck is this? Is this boom or, or bust? The full bust? Some X spell that I don't not prepared for. Okay, Pillage and Pyromancer. Okay, so I'm going to get to attack Nahiri with a Flyer. And, oh shit, if this, if the last card in their hand is Oust or Path, I'm in trouble. But otherwise, I'm going to be in Zombie Town. Okay. So you're saying there's a chance. Emblem. No hesitation on that. Lingering souls back from the graveyard. These two souls attack Nahiri. Let's keep her from putting Emrakul into play, and we should be dominating this board pretty soon. All right, here we are. All in, as they say. I haven't gotten to ride a Liliana just protect the queen until you use Zombie Emblem in a long time. That used to be a pretty common play pattern in Legacy, but not so much anymore. All right, they discarded Pillage when I only have two lands, so they've recognized that land destruction is not how they're going to win this game. Playline of Sanctity? Okay, that doesn't do anything anymore. I guess it stops Liliana of the Veil from making them sack a creature. But I'm not even convinced that that matters. So maybe it does. I'll plus and discard the Lingering Souls because they don't have white mana anyway. And they have one card over there. Let's get rid of it. Elix in response on Liliana. Okay, sure. Discard souls. And I'm going to attack Nahiri with all of these. Just get her far away from going ultimate. I'm not going to attack with my zombies. They all get trades. Like, they don't have anything bigger than a 2-2 right now, but the, like, exponential growth of zombies is worth more. Like, give me two more turns and I'll just have a lethal attack. Here we are. Oh, Gideon Tribal. Now I'm going to have to work through these Gideons. But with them helping, I'm not super worried about it. Drawing the land for this Valkyrie would be cool. Nice. Okay, here's this Valkyrie that I've not put into play for the entire match, but it is a 4-3 lifelink. Real pressure on these Planeswalkers. Player discards a card. So Nihiri's not going to go off this turn, but I should put at least one damage on her and then attack Gideon of the Trials. Oh god, Moto, what are you doing to me? All right, attack Gideon of the Trials, Gideon of the Trials, Gideon of the Trials, and Nihiri the Harbinger. And yeah, I think that's those are my attacks. And then my zombies should be able to go.
go bananas next turn. So by putting one damage on Nahiri, that means if they draw Wrath of God this turn, they don't get an unprotected... Like, I'll have another round of zombies before Nahiri's on eight again. I think that it's uh, about go time with my zombie horde. I also have to make sure any attack is actually lethal. Though I, I guess in the end step I'll make get a bunch of untapped zombies anyway. So we're looking pretty good here. There's no tabernacle in this format, uh, which like if this was legacy or vintage, you'd have to worry about like Armageddon Tabernacle to clear out these zombies forever. But that's not a thing that's gonna happen here. So I can plus Liliana to empty their hand if they don't just... All right, they've ousted my obliterator. It did its job. It blocked. Each player discards a card. Lingering souls. Okay, so they're at 24, which is a lot. Four, five, six, seven. I can just kill Nahiri this turn. They have... Five, six, seven, eight blockers. I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 attackers. That's a creature or planeswalker. All right, so I'm going to attack Gideon Ally with this, and then all of these cards attack my opponent. All of these cards attack my opponent. And I'm going to put two damage on Nahiri and then these at my opponent. So I attack and I'm actually not going to activate Valkyrie because they can just sacrifice the Gideon that's going to die anyway, and then I lose my lifelink damage. Like I, can sacri I can activate this after combat if they have anything left. Or end of turn if they exile a Pyromancer. But I do have to kill Gideon or else they don't get... Or they don't die. Right, so I actually one two three four. I actually want to go to the end step and see if they ex exile a old pyromancer. All right, they didn't do it. I was I was kind of bluffing there, like or we were playing a little bit of cat and mouse with the Eradicator Valkyrie because if I activate it and they have to sack Nahiri, then they can make two tokens in response. But if they make two tokens, I can activate it and get Nahiri in response. It's weird. Why would they play that one? It has less loyalty. All right. Yeah, okay. They're just conceding. All right. Overpowered it. Liliana Emblem. All right, we, we hit our stride in the second half of the league, but uh, definitely, I, I'm not going to say I played optimally, but this deck, I think, relies a little bit too much on the cards and the order you draw them in. Um, that's not something that I like in a Magic deck. Obviously, like this came from a 5-0 deck drop, so somebody drew their cards in the correct order and played them well and did 5-0, and it is possible, but... There's not really manipulation here. There's not even really like card advantage. Uh, it just like having two Liliana's, two Kaya's. I feel like there's probably some version of this where you could redistribute the Planeswalkers and the discard spells. And is Gifted Aetherborn even a card that is important? Like, I don't know. Uh, 
I feel like there's a version of this deck that could be better. Uh, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, as funny as it is, it just it didn't do anything this whole league. And it's a 5-drop in a deck that already has trouble getting to 3 and 4 mana sometimes. So I, th I feel like this deck could be built a little better. Uh, that said, it is fun. Obliterator is an exciting card to put onto the battlefield. And it did win us some games or it delay some games that we otherwise had no business in at all. Um, so if you're into mono black, this is something you could do. I probably won't play this deck again. I would not play a tournament with this deck uh, if if there were heavy stakes on the line. But it was fun to play the league. Uh, thank you, Jared, for the, the link to the deck. And I'll see you all next time. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.